Welcome to the midweek service of Tabernacle Baptist Church, Roanoke, Texas. We're so glad that you're joining with us at this particular time. We look forward to the opportunity that God has given us by the means of this media ministry to share the Word of God with each and every person that will join with us. Our prayer is that God will honor this in the salvation of souls, in the strengthening of his children, and in the correction and guidance that some may need. We do account it a special privilege that God has given to us, and we do not take it lightly. If we're without a church home, we invite you on Sunday to come and be our guest. Sunday school at 10 in the morning, worship hour at 11. But if you have your own church home, be faithful. Be faithful. There has never been a greater need than now for God's people to attend the house of God. And that's where you have your membership and your church needs you. Each other need one another. You need your pastor and your pastor needs you. Oh, it's a time that encouragement is needed. It's a time that we need to draw on together and share one with another so we can have that which we need. We have tonight from Proverbs 21 in verse 2, a lesson that we've entitled the power of decisions. You know, we don't really pay attention to how important it is that we understand the power of the decisions that we make. Because that determines who we are. Solomon said, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. See, every decision we make is going to have a result. Or as we might say, a consequence. And the result will be profitable or it will be costly. There are no neutral decisions we make in life. And therefore, knowing the importance of and the power of the decisions we make should bring us to a reality of how important our decisions are in order that we might make the right decision. You see, our age today tends to blur distinctions and throw everything into a gray area. <clears throat> but in the scriptures, matters are rather more black and white. In the world, there are good people. There are bad people. Those who lovingly obey their God. And those who stubbornly reject Him. And I think it's worth it asking how people get to be the way they are. Why do we behave the way we do? What is the outcome of our lives? Well, it's the decisions we make. You see, Adam and Eve were in a perfect environment. And God gave them the will to make a decision. Was he what they needed and what they would continue with? Or did they want to step out on their own? And we know the decision they made is still reaping consequences because the Bible said, let everything bring forth after its kind. They became sinners and therefore they produced sinners. So think about it. I want us to notice some things. First of all, I want us to notice our character is the accumulation of the decisions we make, not circumstances, not being poor or rich, 
our character is defined by the decision we make concerning our action toward those circumstances. Proverbs 20, 11. Even a child is known by his doings. He's known by his doings. And his doings are made upon the decision he or she's making. Whether his work is pure or whether it's right. You say, now, preacher, a child don't know. Yes, they do. You can teach a child by two or even sometimes younger what no means. And then you teach them by the consequence for not obeying that no. And that, therefore, results in character refinement. Oh, yes. But today, we don't believe anybody has responsibility for their actions. But notice it. When we are dissatisfied with our present state in life, it's tempting to blame circumstances beyond our control. And that reason alone will always make us make a wrong decision. Uh, we begin to think it would be better off if we'd been dealt a better hand in life. If I had what they had, the opportunities, the education, the wealth, yet in all of the important ways we're each the product of the decisions that we've made in the freedom of our wills. You see, we have voluntarily thought, spoken, and done the things that have made us what we are. Our character is built up on, not from our external circumstance, but from what we have chosen to do with those circumstances. I cite just one example. It's the contrast between Saul and David. 1 Samuel 13, 14. But now thy kingdom shall be continued, shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Saul lost his kingdom, not because of circumstances, but because he chose to willfully disobey God. And God had warned him in the day that he did. As Adam was warned, in the day that you eat, there you shall surely die. And God has warned all, warned all of civilization. Reject Jesus Christ. And you'll spend eternity in hell. Accept Jesus Christ. And you'll spend eternity in heaven. It's based upon decision. It's not based upon circumstances. It's based upon how we handle them. On the other hand. 1 Samuel 15, 28. And Samuel said unto him. The Lord hath threat the kingdom of Israel from thee. This day, and hath given it to the neighbor of thine that is better than thee. So, the reason the kingdom was taken from Saul and given to David is Saul disobeyed, made a bad decision, and David made a good decision to obey God. You see, mark it well, David was better than Saul because he had made better choices. Not because of who he was. Not, he, not because he had better circumstances. In fact, Saul was the king. David was just a servant. 
but the decision he made. And for us to understand that and to develop our character as it ought to be, we have to learn to accept the responsibility for what we have made of ourselves. We are what we have chosen to be in character. In character. Look at it. We're self-made persons. Unfortunately, the self-made person, as someone has said, is often the product of unskilled labor. We reap what we sow. Look at Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For what several man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you shall perish. If you sow to the spirit, you shall live everlasting. You see, everybody's relationship is based upon the decision they have made, are making, or will make. The first decision is if you accept Christ as personal Savior, you have the assurance and the promise of God that you'll be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He that believeth in me shall have everlasting life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father. That's what Jesus said. But the Bible said, what if a game, man gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You have a right to make that decision for Christ, or you have that right and that decision-making ability to say, No! I don't want you to be my Savior. I don't want to be saved. And then you must accept what the Bible said. You'll spend eternity in hell. You see. We sow what we reap. Think about that. My life and your life, the failure has been based upon wrong decisions we made. That which has been beneficial has been made upon the decisions we've made that were right. Oh, today, we want to justify ourselves and our behavior by every means we can. I don't have this. I needed this. I didn't get this. I was mistreated. I should have been born there. I'd like to have what they had. No, no, no. No, no, no. You are in character. You are in character. Based upon the decisions you've made. You've either trusted Christ or you've rejected him. You either walk after the flesh or walk in the spirit. But it's based upon the decisions you make. Be not seen, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. There's no such thing as it's not my fault. Yes, it is. Everything that you do is your fault. Good or bad, it's your fault. You see, decisions and choices have a cumulative effect. Even little choices are more significant than we might think. Every decision and every act changes a person for better or worse. One is never exactly the same after making any choice. Think about that. With every one, even the slightest deed, we're building up character and self that will find progressively more easy to act in certain ways and more difficult to act in others. Bad choices lead to bad character. Good choices lead to good character. And no one is standing still in life. With every choice, we're becoming more like God or more like Satan. Oh, listen. 
should be a very sobering awakening to think that every act counts. That would help us to stop and give more careful thought to the decisions we're making with the outcome being known. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death, folks. The wages of sin is death. We cannot continue as an unsafe person to live in sin, to endorse sin, to commit sin, to lift sin up. Sin is death. It's death. And the Bible says that. There'll be a judgment day come. And it's coming quicker than people think. Even as a child of God, we must realize even though we're saved, we're still accountable for our obedience to the Lord. Well, it doesn't matter as long as I go to heaven. That's a foolish statement to make. You're going to stand before as a believer at the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord's going to ask you, give an account of what you did with the life I gave you. I wasted it. And there'll be rewards that you'll lose. And those rewards, ladies and gentlemen, will be, I believe with all my heart, how God had planned in heaven for you to be used and to have special blessings. But listen to me. You see, the Bible said very plainly, God will take every act of accountability in his judging of our lives. You see, no decision is too small to be significant. Go to Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. I know when I was growing up, children of playground, we might have said, that didn't count, or I had my fingers crossed. But when God judges our lives, no such excuses will be accepted. Well, Lord, you know why? I was the person I was because I didn't get the breaks that other folks got. I was raised in a trauma situation. I was raised in a poverty situation. I was raised in a super wealthy position to where there was no control or no consequence for what I'd done. All of that is useless. God tells us even he's given us a conscience now, we're not saved by conscience, but a conscience is kind of like a fever. It begins to tell us when we're doing something wrong. It begins to like a fever letting us know there's a problem we have. And that's the problem of the heart. That's the problem of the heart. And you see, only Jesus can do heart surgery. God said, well, I will create them a clean heart, a new heart. And that's what everybody needs. That's what I had. That's what everybody that saves had is had a spiritual heart transplant. And only the Lord can do that. Oh, listen to me. We may think we're merely being careless or haphazardly, but the consequences of our cho choices are eternal and we're responsible for them. Sooner or later, we must all sit down to a banquet of consequences. Quoted by Robert Louis Stevenson. Think about that. Every one of us. It should always be encouraging to think every act counts. We may never truly say that our lives are helpless and hopeless. We can do something that will alter our situation for the better. You know. In spiritual matters, there's really no such thing as a they all may. We can make choices that will truly alter the present situation. We can act in faith that steps in the direction of goodness and truth, however small and seemingly insignificant 
do make a difference. God doesn't require large steps of righteousness. More than we can manage, only small steps taken in faith. God is not looking for people who can do everything, but for those who are willing to do what they can. Listen to me. Be aware. Life is a serious business. It's going to be faced as an unsaved person at the white throne judgment, as a saved person at the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. Let us be sobered by the fact that each action reaches into eternity and take responsibility for bad choices we've made. On the other hand, let us be encouraged knowing that we can make a difference for good even in a small act of faith. In all things, let us be grateful for the opportunity to make better choices today. And let me tell you, I can show you, you can be assured of making better choices if your relation is right with Jesus Christ. Look at Philippians 4.13. Look at Philippians 4.13. I can do all things. I can do. See, the reason we're not doing what we ought to be doing is I say I can't, which in truth I can't, but through Christ I can do all things. Will I be perfect? No. But I'll tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, I can be assured from the Bible and the Holy Spirit, you'll make a lot more better choices than you do bad choices. Because you'll have the Spirit of God bring to you that conviction that he taught you from the word of God. You'll have that clean conscience. There will also be a, a warning that that's not right. See, sin sears the conscience and it can bring you to the place that nothing bothers you. And those people who have turned themselves completely against God and turned over their life in decision of not accepting God. It's a dangerous thing to have that conscience seared. There are honestly people that have no regret and no shame for sin. Oh no, there's some good in everybody. No, it's not. That's a lie. We're utterly corrupt. There's no good thing that dwells in the human flesh. Nothing. But people become more corrupt when they reject Christ. Father, help us to understand that we can make better decisions through Christ. For we ask in His name, Amen.